taken from them and completely ripped from their lives without any reason. It causes them to relocate, breaks everything they thought they knew, and leaves their homes abandoned. In one little town, this was the case. Located in Peninsula, Ohio, Helltown may be holding residual energy of those who were forced to leave it behind. Or it could be home to something much darker and scarier. Home to many mutant creatures, ghostly apparitions, and satanic cults. Helltown, Ohio is known to be one of the most haunted towns in the United States. Hey there, Morbid Maniacs. Welcome to Vlogtober 2023. I'm so excited. This year is my first year where I made a setup. <laughs> Never done this before. I got this backdrop, this um, tapestry off of Sheen. You can't see it, but there's actually a kitty cat at the top and ghosties, which I thought was really cute. I have my little candle candelabra here and a little candle skull. Really excited. I can't believe it's Vlogtober time already. So starting off this series, we are going to be talking about a very haunted place known as Helltown, Ohio, located in Peninsula, Ohio lies one of the most haunted towns in the United States. With legends of mutant creatures, crybaby bridges, haunted school buses, mass human sacrifices, and ghostly apparitions. It all started in a little town which was known as Boston, Ohio. Originally founded by Native American tribes in 1758, it would shortly become home to a massacre in 1782. This was caused by inner tribes fighting and opposing sides siding with colonels. It's also located on a trivial war trail, which was also home to many bloody battles. It became the site to many Native American burial grounds. In 1806, Boston, Ohio was one of the oldest villages within Summit County. The construction of Ohio and Erie Canals brought loads of people to the region in the mid-1920s. The area would soon flourish when a railroad station was constructed in the town. This station was known as Boston Mills. The name would stick for over a century and little changed in the small village. The city was made up of three towns, but it was in 1974 when it would fall victim to a nationwide anxiety of disappearing forests. A bill would be signed by President Gerald Ford to superintendent named William Birdsell of the National Park Recreational Center to take over the land and establishment and turn it into a national park. And on December 27, 1974, hundreds of acres in Ohio, including land in Boston Township, were the new home of the Cuyahoga Valley National Park. The government began perching the properties of its longtime residents, people who inherited their homes, who lived there their entire lives were forced to leave their homes and everything they knew behind. Some citizens flat out refused to leave their homes and would end up in court with the Department of Interiors whose head was sympathetic with their situation. They soon ordered a halt to the operation after it was found that these homes were purchased illegally. Many residents were contacted about purchasing their old homes back but majority of them sadly had nothing to go back home to. The community was flat out outraged and saddened by this news. Written on one of the walls of a house was the sentence, now we know how the Indians felt. The empty houses were soon boarded up and no trespassing signs were placed on them. 
They would use the homes for their own purposes, even purposefully catching some on fire as training exercises for the fire department. Soon the plans to turn Boston into a national park fell behind and the village would set neglected and abandoned. And it was the Krejci family who owned a dump not far from Helltown. The Krejci dump was a part of the land which was sold to the national park but it was not added on until 1974. The Krejci dump was a part of the land sold to the parks in 1974, but the National Park Service did not acquire this land until 1985. Not long before the government would take over this little town, many locals there would report a strong sulfuric-like smell which was wafting in the air. Authorities assumed that this area was nothing more than a junkyard. That was until rangers began reporting headaches, strange odors, and rashes. One man even becoming physically ill and throwing up multiple times while collecting old bottles. The Environmental Protection Agency became involved and started testing the area. And it was discovered that there were several highly toxic substances found, which showed thousands of chemicals which were improperly disposed of by major companies. The site was closed and cleanup started, however, it never finished. It wouldn't take long before strange occurrences began happening. And soon, the little town of Boston, Ohio, would be nicknamed Helltown. There are hundreds of spooky tales and urban legends which surround Helltown, Ohio. It's said that during the Army's time there, many people went missing. Now, one of the biggest legends which resides in Helltown is that of a church. There are two separate churches within Helltown. One of these churches is known as the Boston Township Church, while the other is named the Mother of Sorrows. This church is rumored to have been built by Satanists. And apparently this can be seen in the structure on the outside of the building as there are upside down crosses. But these crosses were actually a part of the architectural design and had nothing to do with Satanism. However, many people who have been walking through Helltown at night have reported seeing candles in the windows and chanting which can be heard from the outside of the church. There is even the story of a man who will stay on guard in the church's basement and he is set to chase away any trespassers. Um, he also does not like his face being seen and anytime someone tries to get a good look at him, he will turn away. As a result of the chemical dump, many humans and animals have been mutated including a giant monstrous snake, which is known as the Peninsula Python, which roams through the area. Another legend talks about a school bus which sets abandoned within the little town. Now, there are many different variations to this story, but one of the most popular ones talks about a group of kids who were on their way to a field trip. This field trip took place in the 1900s when apparently they were killed by a serial killer. This incident was said to have taken the lives of 20 children and at least one adult. It's said that every so often you will catch a glimpse of the murdered children still sitting in their seats. You can also see the shadowed silhouette of a man standing in the back of the bus, smoking a cigarette. Children's laughter and screams can be heard coming from the outside. And another variation of the story talks about a group of high school students who 
were on their way to a ski resort which was near Boston. While on their way there, an elderly woman had flagged the bus down and she explained that there was a boy in her home who had been really hurt. The bus driver who was attempting to help had turned towards her house hoping to revive this boy. However, whenever the bus had approached the house, a group of Satanists came out from the woods and began attacking them. They apparently sacrificed every single person who was on board the school bus. Bus sat there for over 30 years, standing as a warning to all who decided to venture within Helltown. But it's said that the truth of the reality is that a family who once lived in Helltown was making repairs on their home and knowing that these repairs were going to take a long time they had brought a school bus onto their property where they had planned to stay in the meantime the town is also filled with hazardous roads which will usually end in road closed or dead end signs these roads seemingly will lead to nowhere and it's a strong belief within helltown that Satanists actually put up these signs to keep people from venturing into their territory. Stanford Road is one of the most popular roads within Helltown. It's also known as the End of the World Road or the Highway to Hell. It's a twisting, curvy, dangerous road which many who have been along it describe it as feeling though you're getting ready to go off of a cliff. It's very steep. Many believe that the road itself is evil and will possess your vehicle as there have been many fatal accidents there. And it's said that if you park your car at the end of Stanford Road, that you may just meet a gruesome end at the hands of the Satanists. Many have also told stories of a crazed serial killer with an axe who is said to butcher any motorists who venture along this road late at night. There is even a story of a hearse and this hearse has one working headlight. It is known to follow and chase you down if you get too close to it. And if you just so happen to follow it, it will soon vanish. There have also been reports of chanting and dark hooded figures which have been seen out in the woods late at night. A ghost house is often known to appear. It is a dimly lit structure which will appear off in the distance. It said that if you make it to the door, that under no circumstances should you go inside. If you do and daylight hits, you will be trapped inside forever. A large number of children were said to have been murdered within the Helltown woods by either a serial killer, um, a crazed lunatic, <laughs> Um, Satanists. And the town has its very own cemetery known as the Boston Cemetery. Within this cemetery there is said to be the apparition of a man who will sit on a bench and stare off into the distance. However, this legend has actually been debunked as there is no benches within the cemetery. The cemetery can be found at the end of Stanford Road right around the cliff. Many who visit the Boston Cemetery will claim that the trees will move around on their own when there's no wind and for no apparent reason. In one of the abandoned homes, many have spotted a light which will appear in one of the windows. This home is often referred to as the slaughterhouse. It's been said that if you peer within the windows at night, you just might see ghostly faces staring back at you. 
and on one crybaby bridge within Helltown, it said that if you park your car on the bridge and turn it off while locking the doors and walking away with your keys, that when you come back to your car, it will be completely covered in dust with little footprints. The car will be running, but still locked. There is also the Gore Orphanage, which was also known as the Light of Hope Orphanage. This orphanage was built and operated in the early 1900s. However, the building would mysteriously catch fire, causing over a hundred deaths. It took the lives of 172 children and at least four adults. There are so many more legends surrounding Helltown, Ohio. However, I will leave that for you to venture into. So there is the crazy story of Helltown, Ohio. What do you guys think of this creepy legend? Would you ever visit there for yourself? I know I sure would because it's very close by like Ohio is like right next door to West Virginia. So this may be um, an upcoming video. Wink, wink. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think and have you ever visited Helltown for yourself and experienced anything creepy? I would love to know in the comments below. Let me know if you're excited for Vlogtober and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a big ol' thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you have not already and become a morbid maniac. Also be sure to hit that bell notification, that way you get notified every single time I upload a new video. And also be sure to head on over to my second channel, Mill Vlogs, where I will be posting all of my vlogs, all of my other random videos. And I love you guys so, so much and I will see you in my next video.